Everybody's different. Mm. <laughs> Hello, Frenzy. My name is Kate Shark, and welcome back to my channel. Happy Pride Month. Uh, and for the organization, we are, or I am, should I say, highlighting that day, we are going to be focused on Veterans for Equality. Now, Veterans for Equality is a wonderful organization that actually goes and they go and they protect and offer security um, at organizations and venues, all kinds of things, so that way people in the community can feel safe uh, against uh, those who are trying to do harm. Uh, and it's a wonderful, uh, it's it's a wonderful organization run by queer people. I believe, I do believe. I'm, if I'm not, I apologize. Either way. They're doing this wonderful thing um, and they even have a store and 100% of their purchases or proceeds go towards supplies and equipment for each of their missions um, and they have all kinds of cool things like stickers and mugs and shirts uh, my wife has a shirt of theirs and they even have plenty of things for if you're not a veteran as well so there's a little bit of something for everybody um, i highly recommend you check them out they do great work and uh, that they should they ha should have your support I think um, so that is them I will put a link to their website in the description box below uh, and I believe Veterans for Equality is all of their uh, handles on social media I'll double check but I'm pretty sure that's right anyway so going on forward here we are going to go ahead and continue on with our story here I know the last episode was kind of boring not much happened um, I'm going to try to keep the episodes about an hour a pop, um, but I don't want them to run too long at the same time, so we'll see what happens here as we go along. But uh, last one, just a quick recap, if you're not... Um, Michelle went to swap shirts with Sam. Uh, they went uh, going visiting Sam's mother's grave. Sorry, I thought I heard something. Um, and then they were supposed to be going to have lunch on the beach and Sam was supposed to bring her home, but we don't, we haven't gotten that far yet. So we will see what happens. It was a short ride to the seaside fishing town of Sai Kung. Sam parked her bike near the ocean promenade. We stepped off to the backdrop of shimmering ocean waves and we took a leisurely stroll along the water. There were people lining up to buy fresh seafood from the fishmongers docked at the piers. The area was bustling with activity. Everyone seemed to be in a cheery mood today. It felt as if we had gone to a faraway place together. When you're in Sai Kung, you have to have seafood. Is that so? Of course. Have you been around here often? No, not often. I think the last time I came here was maybe in junior school with my parents. I wonder if it's like junior high. I see, I see. My mother's ancestral home is in a village around here, so I've come around here in the past. The village? Yes, yeah, she's of Hakka descent? I hope that's right. And I do apologize again, I feel like I have a little disclaimer here. If I'm mispronouncing anything, I am so sorry. It is not my intention to insult anyone, and I hope I'm not mispronouncing something and saying something completely horrible. Please know, I'm trying to be of utmost respect in all of this. Oh, there are a lot of Hakka villages in Sai Kung, right? Yes, though many of them sit empty now as more people have moved into the city. I see. That's too bad. Seems like a peaceful place to be. I know, right? I'm not sure they'd be there in the city. A changing economy causes people to move. It's not anything new. Migration has always been a part of our culture. It's a part of survival. Still, it's sad to see an empty village. Culture and identity can live in live on one way or another as long as we don't forget our roots. That's true. Where's your ancestral home? England, unfortunately. My mother is, oh goodness. Toishanese? I hope that's right. And my father is Tio Chu. Tao Chu? Hold on, let me see if I can get this to answer here. Toy Sanis. Toy Sanis. Toy Sanis. Is that right? And then there's. A 
noun, so how do you say it? Tio tu, tio tu, tio tu, tio tu. Tio tu. how you say it? Tio tu. Huh. Nowhere close to how I was pronouncing it. I apologize. Tio tu. I don't know much about my ancestors. My parents don't like to talk about it. A lot of things were lost after the war and all the things happening then. Shameful to say, I never visited my father or my mother's village home. I don't even know where it is. I see. That's all right. You shouldn't feel ashamed. Their legacy lives on through you. You're a beautiful combination of their heritage. You know, my mother wasn't very, wasn't very much a traditionalist. I can't say I'm really close to her side of the family. Is that so? Yes, she left the village when she was young and found work in a theater company. Haka women have a lot of expectations from their family, so what she did was quite shocking. You could say she was quite modern for her time. That's incredible. I look up to my mother. My father, too. They're strong people. Sam. My dad's side is TO2, so we have something in common, right, Michelle? That's right. Uh, there's a place where here with delicious TO2 oyster. Oh, goodness. Oyster congi? Kanji? We can try? Eh? You don't like seafood? I don't mind it. Oysters are high on cholesterol. You have to be careful not to eat too much. Are they? I don't really eat oysters myself. Alright. I'll keep that in mind. Why don't we get something to eat? We can take a look around the town after that. We came all the way here. We should make the most out of today. Okay. Sam led me past the pier and into town. She navigated the small streets with ease. It was a lively summer day. The town streets were busy with people shopping and eating. Would a video store hold its own here? It was a question I asked myself. After a few minutes left and right, Sam brought me to a small cedar se oh my god. A small cedar seafood restaurant quite away from the waterfront. It was already busy, so we were seated at a table outside. Great. The sun was high and bright upon us. It was warm. I felt my own sweat drip down my neck. For the first time this season, I felt that it was truly summer. This restaurant is much beloved by locals. They're known for their fried pissing shrimp? That can't be right. Mantis shrimp. Same thing. Isn't that something even more cholesterol compared to oysters? Well, we're here. It's a place known for their seafood specialties. Why don't we try it? Is seafood high in cholesterol? Have you tried it before? I haven't. I saw that the restaurants by the pier have it too. We didn't have to walk all the way into town then. Trust me, it's really good here. All right, I'll try it. Let's order. We sipped on iced tea while waiting. I noticed that people seem more relaxed here. I saw some people sitting outside, simply enjoying a cool drink in the shade. Things were slower here than in the city. It didn't take long for food to come out, though. I was about to take a bite when I felt something wet touch my leg. What? Well, something touched my leg. Sam! What? Huh? Oh, it's just a cat. Hey, little kitty, are you hungry? Meow, meow. Come here. Oh, pretty. A calico cat was sitting under the ta underneath the table. How pretty! It looks like uh, our Cali cat we have here. I don't know if she'll let me pick her up. She's not happy today. <laughs> Sam was petting the cat casually without concern. Don't touch it. Why not? She's stray. Yeah, so what? Look, she's so friendly. Come on, reach out your hand. Why? She wants your attention. Don't be mean to her. That's right. See, sometimes we just want a little attention. All right, all right. What should I do, Petter? Hi, honey. Scratch your cheeks. Okay. Oh, okay. Hold on. I have some issues. Sorry, my wife and I just got a new dog, and having we're having to adjust a little bit. Okay. Oh, she's purring. She's rubbing against me. Keep petting her. <laughs> she's kind of cute. She's very cute. Why don't you give her a piece of shrimp? Feed the cat. I fed the cat a piece of shrimp. The cat took a piece in its mouth and then scurried off. Yeah, that's what she wanted. <laughs> Aw. She ran away. It's like that sometimes. 
The cat appealed to my emotions and manipulated it for a benefit. Yeah, that's a cat. <laughs> What's that? Don't be sad. She'll come and play with you again. I'm not sad. Don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. Let's eat the food while it's still hot. Right. How's the food? It's delicious. Right? Oh, here comes the fish. That's a whole steamed fish. How many dishes did you order? Five. It's way too much for the two of us. You said you never really ate seafood here before. Don't worry, it's on me. I want you to try it. Um, that's a lot of calories. Dilute it with the rice. That's not how it works. How about we feed the leftovers to stray cats? No, don't lure them to me. I'm just kidding. Let's just enjoy the meal. We can worry about the leftovers later. Okay. Somehow we were able to finish the meal. We walked slowly back to the waterfront. We ate so much my waistband felt tight. Sam yawned and casually stretched her arms into the air. The warm sun made me feel sleepy. I refrained from yawning and crossed my arms. I had to keep up appearances in front of Sam. Sam was taking it too easy, I felt. For what? She ate a big meal? She's tired now. Couldn't she notice the tension I had with her? I had a clear agenda. I wanted my blouse back. I had an intended to let Sam know today that I wasn't going to see her again. There was no longer any reason to see her once I got my back my blouse. But after this and that, I had ended up spending nearly half the day with her. Once we arrived back at the pier, I planned to have her take me home. I didn't forget that Sam had suddenly kissed me the other day. I didn't understand how Sam could act so cool and nonchalant about it. She's kind of, she was kind and friendly, but she smiled at me no differently than before. Did she not feel affected by it? We made, a, we made one final visit to the pier. We leaned against the metal railings and watched the boats come and go. There was a slowness in today. The stun, sun was still high up in the sky, but even the fishermen had eventually pack up for the day. We started to walk back to where Sam had parked her bike. It was about time for me to confront Sam. Would you like to head back now? Or is there something else you want to see? Oh, <laughs> I, I want to go. I was going to say it when, when a sign caught my eye. What's that sign about? Stargazing and summer camping tour. What's that? Ah, there's a few camping sites around here where you can see the stars quite clearly. Really? This is close to Hong Kong? Yep, just over the other side of the mountains. On a good night, you can see the whole Milky Way. It's absolutely beautiful. I've seen it only a few times. It's really an unforgettable sight. Really? No way, I don't believe you. We're still so close to the city. Can you really see it with all the city lights nearby? Light pollution. You can. Are you interested in seeing it? I've never seen the constellations before with my own eyes. Growing up in the city, it's hard to see much in the sky besides buildings and towers. There's always the planetarium. It's not really the same. All right, why don't we go have a look? Uh, I can't. It's too far. It's not that far away. Just a little hike. I'm not dressed for hiking. And I didn't prepare anything for it. Don't worry, it's an easy walk. Let me buy some snacks and drinks from the Corridor Mart and we can go. I don't think I should. I wanted Sam to tell me her intentions. <laughs> I didn't want to talk about it, but I couldn't leave such a big issue hanging between us. I wanted to know more than anything what she thought about it. I wish I could say this to Sam, but I couldn't spit out the words. The other night, I was too forward. I apologize. I understand. I get it if you feel uncomfortable around me. Sam, I still want to be with you more. Talk to you more. And learn more about you. It doesn't have to be today. It can be another time. Would that be all right with you? For a moment, I sensed that there was a vulnerability in Sam. I didn't know how she could always read what I was thinking. Sam seemed sincere. It wasn't anything to look at the stars with someone. I doubted that the stars could be seen like that so easily. I was curious. I lived here all my life and I never heard about any stargazing here. A part of me wanted to prove her wrong. Won't we be out too late if I have to wait for the stars? The sun sets around 8 p.m. How does that work for you? Then it's all right. As long as it's not too far and not too late, okay? Okay. We 
We got on Sam's bike and she took the road that led further into the country. The road became less and less paved and more and more rocky as we went. She stopped at what appeared to be a trailhead for a hiking path into the mountains. We can't take the bike any further, but it's not too far a walk from here. Are you comfortable in your shoes? I'm fine. Okay. Just a bit further. Mm. We walked on the dirt path that cuts through the mountain. It was the height of summer, the chirping, and the chirping of the birds was loud. As I walked, dirt got into my shoes. Walking itself wasn't uncomfortable, but the rocky path made scratches and marks on the white leather of my shoes. Oh well, it was nothing to be upset about. I looked at Sam. She still wore her thick jean jacket. She was sweating quite profusely. Oh, there she does it again. She was wiping the sweat off her brow with her hands. That was a bad habit to have. What? Dirt and dead skin from her hands could clog and enlarge her facial pores. People with good skin should cherish it. I passed my handkerchief to Sam. She passed it back without using it. Suit herself. I wiped my own sweat from my neck. We kept walking and walking. I wasn't exactly sure where Sam was taking us. There was no view other than shrubs and trees. The trail eventually took us through the woods and onto a, the grassy mountain hills. There was an incline on our walk. Thankfully, it didn't take long to reach the plateau. I saw nestled below the foothills was a secluded ocean cove. There was a stone path ahead leading down the beach. I felt the salty sea breeze from, from the top of the hill. It was pleasant. The sky appeared much bluer and whiter here. It seemed as if the horizon stretched into eternity. I stared into the endless blue. My head was spinning. The height made me feel dizzy. Careful. Sam tapped lightly on my shoulder. I might have been swallowed up by the sky had Sam not been so grounded on her feet. Drink some water. We're just about there. You'll feel better in the shade below. Okay. We descended down the stone steps. We had finally arrived at our destination. We made it. Ugh, I'm so sweaty. I hate humidity. How are you making out? Tired? Hi, pretty girl. Oh. Oh, what'd I do? Oh, I must have hit something. I'm good. I can't believe you hardly broke a sweat. Are you even human? Hey, get down. Thank you. I perspire normally, I think. Is that so? I'm going to help myself to the soft drinks. Which one would you like? I'll have the same one you're having. Coke, then? Okay. It's beautiful here. Yes, I'm surprised not a lot of people are here. We're at a secret spot. I used to come here a lot. I used to come here and to some of the ouch beaches further out with my family. We used to stay past sunset and make bonfires. Is that so? Yep. I never did such a recreational thing with my family. It's pretty fun. What kind of things did you do on the beach with them? Lots of things. We ate snacks, played cards, swam, fished, and of course watched the stars. It's too bad we don't have a tent today. We could sleep outside with it. You know, the crabs come out at night and will pinch you all... You know, the crabs come out at night and pinch you all over if you fall asleep on the beach. I pinch. Uh, really? That sounds exciting in its own way. Not really, it hurts. Let's make a spot for ourselves in the shade over there. I'm about to burn up in the sun. Uh, wait, Sam. Hmm? What is it? A cool pack. I, I got it from the convenience store earlier. For me? Yes. I'll put it on the back of your neck. Oh. Is it okay if I touch your hair? Go ahead, I don't mind. Thank you, that feels nice. Your skin is quite red now. It's going to peel if you let it burn like this. You need to take care of yourself more, you know. You must be hot in your jacket. Michelle. Sam, could you take it off? <laughs> Are you asking me to take my top off? Huh? There's people around, though. What? I mean for the bug spray. I got it at the convenience store, too. I'll spray it on you. Oh. It's okay. 
You can use it up for yourself. I don't need it. You don't need it. In this subtropical climate, I'll take my chances. God forbid, anything with a chance of mosquitoes out there, they are all over me. Bug spray or be damned. I don't like the sticky feeling of bug spray. I don't like the itchy feeling of bugs or bug bites. I rarely get mosquito bites anyway. So you're one of those people. I know, right? Those bastards. <laughs> well, don't ask for my no pico if you get bit. You're no pico. It's itch cream. I always have it with me, just in case. You never know with mosquito and bug bites. Oh, Michelle, you're really prepared for today. I always get a bad reaction from mosquito bites. It's for my own sake. I didn't bring it specifically for today. I mean, you're the one who should be more prepared. You don't even think about putting on bug repellent when we're outside for so long. Okay, I'll put it on. I wouldn't want to attract any more bugs to us. Could I bother you to apply it on for me? Sure. I can help spray your back too. I'm fine for now. I already sprayed myself earlier. Maybe in a couple of hours. I got the concentrated spray, but it says to apply every five hours. Really, does that mean I have to spray it again later? Of course. Let's not forget about the sunscreen too. Huh? Don't tell me you didn't apply sunscreen. That is something that's very important. You should apply it, even though I'm very bad about doing that. I forgot. Well, I have some on my bag if you want to borrow it too. When it's 30 SPF, you have to apply every two hours. That's amazing, Michelle. Your bag is like, ooh, Dora Meow's magic pocket. Uh, we found a little spot for us to sit in the shade. The sea breeze was cool and the sand was warm under our feet. We positioned ourselves to look out towards the sea. The water was such a beautiful azure blue today. The sound of the ocean waves and rustling leaves was soothing to my ears. I could sit here and look at this for 10,000 years, I thought. Oh, pretty. We ate up our convenience store snacks during the time we were waiting. I had let Sam pick and choose the snacks as it was her idea to begin with. Sam liked crunchy and spicy snacks like flavored chips and shrimp crackers. I like chewy and savory snacks like jerky and biscuits with filling. I noticed more and more that we weren't compatible in any sense, or do you balance each other out? But despite all this, we had passed an entire day together without the strain or tension that I had expected. We could make light conversation or just simply admire the view. It didn't really seem to matter to us. Whatever we did, the sun eventually made its way down on the horizon. Time passed by at a paradoxical rate whenever I was with Sam. It would be neither too fast nor too slow. It always moved at its own place, never as intended. I had almost failed to notice when the sky turned a vivid pink at sunset. Despite the troubles that I had with my, within my heart, I could not deny that the sunset tonight was simply sublime. Uh-oh. Sam. What is it? I forgot to mention. I watched that movie I got from you the other day. Oh, how'd you find it? It's interesting. It's different from other movies I've watched. I see. Did you like it? I liked it. I'm glad. It's a pretty heavy movie to watch, I have to say. Yes, it was cruel and that it had to end like that. Yes, it was a sad ending. And it's even more terrible to know that the real actress experienced something similar in her life and it was met with her own tragedy. Really? That's so sad. And it makes me angry. Why wasn't more done to protect her? How could such a thing happen even after making such a film? It was a horrific thing. But we can't speak on her behalf or for her experience. What happened to her is not something we could ever fully understand. It's not always a matter of strength and mental resolve. I know. That's why we have to be sensitive and empathetic, even when others aren't. I'm loving the the uh, symbolism and the, the messages this is trying to portray in this. And we have to be hopeful. I'd like to think things are a little better now than they were then. Ruan left a spe spectacular legacy. 
But we can't forget her tragedy. The messages of the film still apply to, to, to today's society. It's not easy to, to change people's perception, perceptions. Wow. I think so. But thinking like that is so sad. Is it? I don't know. I mean, it's better now, right? It's not like in the past where women couldn't go to school or work. It might have been difficult in the 1930s, but it shouldn't be so hard to live freely anymore, right? I think that's something only you can answer. That's... This conversation got quite serious, didn't it? No. I wanted to ask you about it, too. I see. I've been thinking about the messages in these old films. We watch them so detached from the people who made them. How would they feel if they knew people 50 years later would still be watching them and discussing them? You see a beautiful face. But we'll never really know what was happening behind the screen. Are we respecting Ruan by keeping her films and watching them? Even if, if, even if those films might have been produced during the most painful moments of her life? Oh, God. Um... It's a loaded question, isn't it? Maybe not loaded, but a complicated one. It might not be good. I'm not sure. Knowing all that, it might not be good to keep reminders of such things. But it's still something complicated. I'm not sure how to answer this right. I suppose that's it. Perhaps there is no right answer. That's right. I think you're a thoughtful person, Sam. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with me. You really think so? I was afraid I gave you the wrong impression. No, I really appreciate you coming out with me today. It's fine. I didn't have much plan today anyway. I'm happy to see the stars with you. It's nice that we can talk, frankly. I enjoy spending time with you like this. The sun should be setting soon. Will we really see the stars from here? Yes, just wait patiently. The sun had finally begun to dip beneath the horizon. As it grew darker, stars started fall filling the sky, apparently one after another. What's that one? It's such a bright star. That one is called Vega. For a second I read it, it's like, I read too fast, and for a second I thought, Vegeta! <laughs> Vega. It's one of the stars that from form the Summer Triangle. You see the other two stars there? So that's Vega, that's Alt Altair, and with Deneb over there. Oh, I see it. I know that story. The star crossed lovers, the coward, and the, the cowherd and the weaver girl. That reminds me, the Seven Sisters Festival is in August sometime, right? That's right. This year it's on August 12th. Really? People celebrate the Western Valentine's Day nowadays. I never really know the date of the festival. I understand. It's nice to be on the receiving end for chocolates and flowers. Nowadays, I suppose it isn't so pertinent to be praying to the gods for a good husband or a fertile marriage. <laughs> Tell that to my mother. She's worried that I'll become a spencer if I don't try harder to get married. But she doesn't want you to leave the house. Please tell me what's going on, Mom. <laughs> But I'm sure she'll have even more complaints once I start dating. She's thinking of your best interests, I'm sure. Romance shouldn't be taken lightheartedly. I know. My dad is still holding out to the thought that I would get married someday. Is that so? Do you plan on getting married? Well, even if I find the right person, I'm not sure I can. I see. How about you, Michelle? Uh... I haven't thought about it yet. My mother has a lot of expectations on what kind of person I should marry. He has to be older, wealthier, taller. He should have a prominent chin and a square forehead. His lips shouldn't be too big and his eyebrows shouldn't be too thin. She really cares about the feng, f wow, feng shui of someone's face. I don't know why she believes in, even believes in such things. It's quite a laundry list. You're a wonderful person, Michelle. I'm sure you won't have trouble finding someone like that. You'd make a beautiful bride someday. I don't have the time right now to care for that. I'm so busy with work. I see. Well, if you ever feel you need a little spiritual help, there's a temple in the New Territories that's dedicated to the Seven Sister Deities. It's not too far from here. It's one of the few temples that still celebrate the festival. 
if you pray there, you'll be guaranteed to find your love. Really? I don't really believe in that superstitious stuff. And I think such prayers aren't necessary these days. There's more to life than getting married. Yes. <laughs> Career and personal growth is important too. Personal growth, absolutely. Career? <laughs> you think so? You're such a modern woman, Michelle. Well, there's already so much to do. You know, I heard from someone that if you leave a bag of toiletry, toiletries as an offering at the day of the festival, you'll be granted smooth and unblemished skin for the rest of your life. What? I don't believe that. When did these legends get so specific? Wasn't it supposed to be needlework or fruit offerings? You made that one up, didn't you? Hmm. My beautiful skin can attest. Uh-huh. I don't believe you. You can go to the temple on the day of the festival and see for yourself. Yeah, I don't want to. For something so trivial, there's no need to bother the gods about it. Trivial, huh? My Michelle, you must be so popular. Or you must be popular. No, I mean, I agree with what you mean. You have to take matters of love into your own hands. You can't be afraid to fall in love first. You'll get hurt if you think that way. It's better than waiting or giving up on it entirely. You're brave. I'm not sure if I could do the same. I won't say that I'm brave. I just want to be myself, that's all. I think you're a brave person, Michelle. When you speak your mind, I find it quite attractive. Uh, don't be flustered. I mean it. Please be honest with me. Sam, I... <clears throat> What about that big bright star over there? Do you know what that one is? Oh, that one. I think it's Antares, the heart of the scorpion. Antares, the heart of the scorpion. You seem to know a lot about this. I like astronomy and astrology. Is that so? Astrology? Like star signs? Yeah. What's your sign? I don't know. What does it go by? Date of birth? I see. Tell me. What? Your birthday. Why? So I can tell you your sign. I don't believe in those things. It's harmless fun. Mm. All right. It's February 16th. Ah, you're an Aquarius. Hmm. Makes sense. What's your sign then? Capricorn? They're highly compatible with, compar with Aquarius signs. Is that so? No, I made that up just now. I have no clue. I don't know anything about it. Compatibility is all about how you try to understand each other, don't you think? Of course, I didn't think for a second that star signs mattered. <laughs> well, you never know. What? All right, how about your, your lunar zodiac sign? What is it? Tell me, please. Rabbit. I am also a rabbit. Oh, I am also a rabbit. Which is funny, because my mom's a rabbit, I'm a rabbit, and I'm going to have a nephew born this year who will also be a rabbit. So, <laughs> next year will be your year then. Oh, that's right, because 87 is when I was born. You'll be turning 24 or 26. That's such a big milestone. That'll be challenges in the coming year for you. That's why I didn't want to tell you. So you're 35 then. I thought you would be younger than me. I'm 23. <laughs> <laughs> What's your zodiac? Eh, I'm older than you. That's all you have to know. I want to know. Okay. I was born in the year of the dog. Oh my god. I'm a rabbit. My wife is a dog. <laughs> so that means she's five years older. So if Sam, so if she's 23, that makes Sam 28. Dog? Hmm. Rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, dog. Then you're 33. I think your zodiac order is not quite right. Uh, I'll look it up later. <laughs> You're so cute, Michelle. All right, I'll tell you. My age is not a secret. I'm 27. Oh. Oh? What did you mean by oh? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to answer this. I thought you would be this age. Really? 
You're mature and knowledgeable on a lot of things. You're also open-minded and adventurous. I like that about you, Michelle. Will we really be able to see the Milky Way from here? It depends. Sometimes it's quite visible, but other times we might have to wait till midnight for it to be dark enough to see. I see. Do you want to head back now? You mentioned you had to go by nightfall. Not yet. It's fine. Can I stay a little out a little longer with you? Is that okay? Okay. The whole day had passed and Sam hadn't brought up the issue of our relationship. I wouldn't bring myself to ask Sam directly about it. Doing that would mean I had to confront my own feelings towards Sam. Sam was once again stoic behind a smile. I couldn't guess what she was feeling. It was as if the clock had been reset up to the first day I met Sam. It wasn't bad that it was like this, still. I knew it wasn't fair to have Sam wait with me for so long just to see the stars. I'm not one to usually have requests, but that night I really wanted to see it. If I could catch a glimpse of the Milky Way with my own eyes, I felt, I felt that I would know. I would know how small we were as individuals in the universe. Oh God, let's not talk too much about space because I will freak the fuck out. And how much smaller things that concern us must be. Oh God, I get so freaked out when we talk about... I wanted to understand this feeling. I wanted to confirm that it was tangible and real. We waited and we waited. We waited for the bands of nebula clouds and star clusters to appear in the night sky, but they continued to allure us. I knew they existed regardless of my observation, but I needed to ascertain it with my own eyes. Oh, so sometime between dusk and twilight, I drifted into a deep slumber. I dreamed of a strange dream. It was a scene that played out in my memory so many times since that day. I was in my high school classroom. It was the first day back to school after summer break. I was chatting with my classmates before the start of afternoon classes. I was about to tell them the story of my summer trip to Taiwan when I was called to step out of the classroom. There had been someone who urgently needed to see me. But instead of being my mother waiting to see me, it was like it was in my memory. It was Sam in her red dress. She gestured for me to follow her. It was strange, as if I put, was put in a trance. I followed her out of the school without question. I sat behind Sam on her bike, and she drove it into some distant place in the countryside. We got off the bike, and then we walked, and we walked along one of the mountain paths. Day wore on into night. When we had reached the mountain plateau, Sam suddenly ran ahead of me. I tried to follow. However, I quickly lost sight of her. I did my best to chase after her through the thickets of trees and bushes. I was running blindly, and before I could realize, I slipped and lost my footing. It was a cliff side. I did not feel pain. In fact, I seemed to be in free fall. It was a quite a surreal experience falling into a dark void. When I fall in dreams, I'm, you know, instantly. I eventually hit a bottom and landed in a pool of water. It seemed to be the ocean. The briny smell was strong. The water felt cold and heavy. I could not see anything. It was so dark. It felt as if I was sinking deeper and deeper into the watery depths. A heavy weight pressed against me. My chest felt tight. I thought I was going to drown. There was a suffocating realness to this dream. I was frightened. I struggled and struggled to swim to the surface. I couldn't fight whatever force was pulling me down. Everything became black. I must have passed out. When I came to, I found that instead of sinking deeper into the water, I found myself floating upwards. It was as if I was drifting towards the celestial plane. I struggled to get myself grounded, but I had no control over my trajectory. I closed my eyes. I felt oddly at peace floating upwards like this. I was resigned into thinking that I would be forever lost in the cosmos when I heard a voice call out to me. I opened my eyes to find myself afloat in silvery water. The water was cool. I had a clear, transparent quality to it, but I couldn't make out a bottom to its depths. From a distance, I saw the light of a lantern coming towards me. Oh, pretty. It was a woman I did not know. She wore an orange robe with flowing sleeves. She rode her small wooden boat towards me. 
The red lantern perched on the boat illuminated her figure, but her face was quite obscured. I saw that her makeup was an older style, but I could not place the period. The woman gestured for me to get onto her boat. I recalled her saying that she could help me find my way back home. Strangely, I did not hesitate. I didn't feel any ill intent from her. I climbed onto the boat. The woman had me sit at the front of the rowboat. She sat on the back and steered. The boat glided along the still water quietly. We seemed to have traversed a far distance in the darkness. The only guiding lights were the distant stars above. The woman did not say anything to me when I was on the boat. The only sound that could be heard was the sound of the oar pushing water. I couldn't make out the woman's expression. She had an air of quiet dignity and an imposing presence. I was afraid to cross her unknowingly. I was scared, but I didn't feel that she was someone harmful. Something about her seemed familiar. I couldn't place why. Though the temperature of the water and our surroundings felt cold, the, she gave me a warm feeling. The dark night didn't seem so terrifying anymore. The light of the stars above grew brighter as we journeyed onward. The night sky was beautiful, I remember thinking to myself. Eventually, we neared land. I saw a sandy beach nestled in the mountain cove from a distance. It seemed familiar, like a place from a recent memory. Hold on. As we got closer and closer to land, I saw that there was someone at the shore waiting for me. It had to be Sam. She was there waiting for me all along. As I was about to step off the boat, the woman said something to me. I remember it distinctly. She had a sweet and gentle voice. She sang to me a poem from a song I recall hearing a long time ago. The spring brings blows. The young swallow's tail makes ripples on the water. The little waves dash away the reflection of the lotus flower. Perhaps in still water, the swallow will see her own reflection and take flight towards the new moon. My mind was clouded. I could not understand her words. I turned to face her. She spoke to me again in plain language. Young lady, haven't you realized yet? The summer that you remember had ended long ago. You have to wake up from this dream and take your first step forward. I stepped off the boat, and when I looked back, she was already gone. There was no boat, no lantern. There were no traces of the woman. All I saw was the ocean, the beach, and sand before me. And I woke up from my dream. Michelle, did you fall asleep? Michelle? It was dark when I woke up. I couldn't make, make out any lights in the sky or any much of anything else before me. The sound of the ocean waves told me I was still on the beach. But I couldn't see where Sam was. I felt a cold chill run through my spine. It was unnerving to be alone in the dark like this. Ugh. Sam, where are you? I'm here. I felt her hand on my shoulder. Sam had been next to me the whole time. Are you alright? You look scared. I had a strange dream. I was afraid you left. And leave you alone here in the dark? I don't know. Oh. Tired. No. I, I didn't mean to fall asleep. No worries, you weren't out long. Really? It's so dark now. Huh? Is it still not dark enough? We can't see any more stars now compared to earlier. The clouds had rolled in. Some nights are like that. Oh. Disappointed? No. It's just... It's getting late now. I think we should go. If we stay any longer, we're going to get eaten alive by mosquitoes. I see. We have a bit of a walk back to the bike. Hold on to my hand, alright? Mm -hmm. We walked back from the beach. The walk, excuse me, the walk back from the beach wasn't too far. But I wished in my heart that it was just a bit further. It wasn't that I absolutely had to see the stars. I could go to the planetarium anytime to see them if I really wanted to. It was just, just a bit further. I think I see where the bike is. Michelle? Wait, Sam. What is it? Sam, look up. Oh, pretty. The clouds opened up a rift in the sky, and we were able to see it. The streaks of spiraling stars and stardust that formed in the arms of the Milky Way appeared in the night sky above us. The cluster of starry night lights shone brightly for us in this temporal moment. We gazed as, at it as long as we could. That really is pretty. Mm -hmm. I knew it would only be a short moment, for the clouds would soon cover the sky once again, returning the light to a, a plain darkness. But we saw it. We actually saw it. And it was stunning.
I looked over to Sam. She was looking up to the sky. Her eyes were wide and all. I was smiling from ear to ear. My heart swelled up with an unknown joy. My chest, my chest felt tight as if my heart was going to burst. It was a heavy feeling, a cathartic release of emotions. It was almost frightening. I reached out for Sam's hand in the darkness. She gently squeezed my hand back. I felt reassured that I was on the same plane with her and that we were living wit we were living witnesses to this night. Beautiful. It really is. It's tremendous to see the stars like this with your own eyes. There's so many more stars in the night sky than I could have imagined. Yes, it was quite a sight. I haven't seen a night sky quite like this before. I'm really glad we got to see it. Thank you for bringing me here. I had a good time coming here. It would be nice to see it again, Sam, Michelle. I'll always treasure this moment. Thank you, Sam. Me too, Michelle. We rode on Sam's bike back to the city. On the Whiting Mountain Road in the twilight hours of the night, it felt as if we were the only people in the world. I held tightly onto Sam, our dust-filled clothes flung out sand into the careless wind. Her hair smelled like the sun and the sea. Our moment together felt like a dream. I wasn't dreaming, though. I was in the real world. Time moved forward without bias, and soon the city lights came into view. I thought that the road was back was short. Today felt as if I had gone to another country with Sam. Had the city always been so close? The city lights shone brightly from the distance, much brighter than the light of the stars. The road was smooth. We quickly entered the freeway. The city lights got closer and closer. I could almost grasp the light with my hands. I saw in the distance the city that we call home. It was a city that never sleeps. The city lights always shine so brightly they never allowed the sky to rest. Even in the midnight hours, the sky was a greenish, greenish blue from the city lights. It was never pitch black like the way it was when I was on the beach. The city lights were many and bright. They shrouded us from seeing the stars that were just above us. But I don't dislike them for that. Each shiny light in the city served as beacons to the rest of the universe, saying loudly that we were here. We were here, and we existed in this moment. They were a sign of how many people were out there trying to make their claim to this place we call home. Sam and I were just one of the many. No matter what becomes of us, the city lights and the stars above will keep on shining. What transpired tonight might ultimately have no effect on the fate of the universe, but it was something significant to me. I held on to Sam more tightly. I felt insecure. Cars and other vehicles sped by us as we entered the urban landscape. Though we were no longer alone on the road, our journey was its own. I could hear the sounds of the city clearly now. There were clear sound there were the sounds of traffic, the sound of vehicle engines, car horns, and the audible crossing signal was unavoidable anywhere in Hong Kong. As we entered the city proper, I could hear the sound of people chatting on the sidewalks, the sound of music playing in the near distance. The city was still bustling at this midnight hour. My heart felt pained. We weren't going as fast anymore on the bike, but it felt as if we were accelerating out of control towards something too unknown and abstract. It was such a heavy feeling. A part of me wanted to hit the brakes on this. Another part of me wanted to keep going further and further. Why did I have to feel like this? I thought. Sam looked over her shoulder at me at the next traffic stop. I couldn't make out the expression in her eyes. All I saw was my own reflection in her helmet. It was well past midnight and for the first time I thought to myself that I didn't want to go home. Where's your home, Michelle? Hold on. It's by Kol Kowloon City. Okay, I'll drop you off. I can bring your shirt to you another time. That's right. I almost forgot about it. The pedestrian signal was counting down. The light was about to change. Sam took her foot off the road and back on the bike. I felt the forward momentum of the bike slowly inching ahead. Sam tightened her grip on the throttle. I should tell her before it was too late to turn back. Sam? Hmm? You don't have to take me back home. I want to go back with you. It's Michelle? It had been quite late already. I was. It was much past the time I should have been home. I didn't have any other internal motives to be here. I just didn't want to go home yet. I wanted to say this to Sam, but I couldn't find the words to articulate this. I looked over to Sam. She acted cool and casual, as if such a scene had played out before her a hundred times already. I didn't like that. 
It's been a long day. Want me to put on a movie? If you're hungry, we can get something to eat. There's still a lot of late night eateries open here. A midnight snack would be fun. There's wonton noodles. There's dim sum. There's barbecue. And let's not forget about da lang. Just name it. Sam, I'm not hungry. Oh. I looked around her place. It was hard to look at Sam in the eye for some reason. I saw a familiar blouse hanging by her bed. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. There's your blouse. She handed me my blouse. It was neatly pressed. No stain or damage could be found. It's lucky it didn't stain at all, right? Sam looked over to me. Her eyes seemed to search for a response. We had spent the whole day together, yet this was the first time I looked deeply into her eyes. I couldn't endure her gaze that seemed to look through me. I turned away. I had no words to say. That's pretty. Sam turned her back to me and walked over to the balcony. She opened the door and stepped out. I felt the night air fill her room. Sam seemed to be searching for something in the night sky. I didn't know what. The neon lights outside covered Sam in vivid reds. I stood apart in the blue, dim room. The distance between us was only a room's length, but the dividing line was all too apparent. I felt incredibly lonely like this. You can't see a single star from here, but occasionally you can see airplanes flying in and out of Kai talk? There's something about seeing a plane taking off that makes you want to go somewhere. Sometimes when I see a plane in the night sky, I imagine myself sitting on that plane. I'm looking down on the city from the window seat of the plane, a thousand feet up in the air. The cabin lights turn off, and I lean back, rest assured I'll be somewhere far away after a night's sleep. Do you feel that way sometimes? I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if I shared the same feeling with Sam. I tried to imagine the same scene that Sam had described, that I was up in the air inside an airplane looking out the window at the city lights below. Where was I going? I didn't have an answer for myself. There wasn't a specific place that came to mind when I, where I wanted to travel. I searched for an answer in my heart. I wanted to go somewhere. I didn't, didn't matter so much where. What I wanted was to go somewhere with someone at my side. I stepped towards Sam. What I was searching for wasn't something that could be found outside her window. It wasn't something that could be seen in the sky either. I reached out towards Sam. I hoped that she could answer me. Sam? Michelle? Sam? How do you feel about me? Michelle? Forget it. It's nothing. I, I like you. What do you mean? I would like us to be more than this. More? I don't understand. How could two women... If it's something possible with you, it's... it's impossible. We're both... I just think... Michelle, look at me. Michelle, don't tell me what you... Don't tell me what you think, but rather how you feel. Feel. I feel... I feel like you're an old friend. That you're easy to talk to and that you always have something interesting to say. I like that about you. Michelle, what am I to you? Uh, when we kissed last time, did you feel it to be wrong? Kissed? It... it did, but it didn't. I can't tell you. Then if we kissed again, would it be alright? Sam, I, I... I don't know. I had a really good day with you. Michelle, you're a charming person. I want to be with you more. I want to get to know you more. I have a good feeling just from being with you today. I want to go somewhere with you again with you and talk with you more. If you don't mind, I want to kiss you again. I want to be someone close to you. I want to hold you and touch you. Oh. <laughs> Sam, please, that's too much. I can't. You can't. I, I don't know. I never felt this way before. My heart is pounding so fast. I don't know what to do with it. Michelle, Sam, may I? In the same place where we were sh shared our first kiss, I found myself again face to face with Sam. This time there were hardly any sounds outside to disturb us. Nor were there any smells from a neighborhood neighbors cooking to distract us. Even if there was something, I didn't pay it any heed. My attention was to the person before me. It was just the two of us together again at this lonely hour. My back leans against the cool glass of the balcony window. Sam's warm body pressed against mine. 
She deepened her kiss and I followed. I wanted time to pause and let us be like this for a bit longer. I wanted to take in this moment, slowly, so I wouldn't forget. When I broke free from her kiss, Sam held her arms around me gently. I looked into her eyes. Michelle, I want to show you my feelings. Oh! <laughs> More than this, Sam, please. Just kissing is already, is already enough for me. Michelle, are you scared? I'm, I'm not. Then can I kiss you again? Sam. Whoa! <laughs> that escalated quickly. Okay. We kissed with passion. What was it before? I didn't stop Sam. I couldn't. I couldn't deny that I wanted to understand this feeling that I had with Sam. Even though my logical being said I should push her away. It shouldn't be like this, I thought. I shouldn't be like this at all. But against all reason, I tightened my embrace. I held Sam closer. I couldn't explain to myself why. Why tonight, of all nights, I could go further with her. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sam. Michelle. I like you so much. You're so pretty and I like you so much. <laughs> Sam. You're beautiful. I want to cherish you. Wait. Who's who? Okay. I see. Mm -hmm. Huh? Sam pushed me onto her bed. She took off her shirt and tossed it across her room. Sam pressed her body on top of mine. Her body felt hot. I'm sorry, I felt reading this out loud feels weird. I apologize. I could not taste the salt of our... I could, excuse me, I could taste the salt of our sweat in the air. She smelled of sweet perfume. I was drunk with Sam's fragrance. Sam kissed me between ragged breaths. I thought that was going a whole other direction. I apologize. It was a heavy feeling. My heart was pounding hard. It felt like it was going to leap out of my chest at any moment. I called out her name. Sam. I just arched my back and my fingers gripped tightly on the bed sheets. My lungs burned. It felt like I was going to drown. I needed her to take me away from this overwhelming feeling. Sam slowly moved her kisses down from my lips and onto my neck. Sam's kisses were forceful yet soft. She bit and left marks on my neck and my shoulder. It hurt, but it did not hurt as much as my body ached. I didn't notice how quickly Sam undid the buttons of my shirt. Aside from the bra covering my breasts, my chest was bare for her to see. Sam, this is... this is too much. Michelle... Sam, please. I... can you show me more of your... Whoa! <laughs> this is getting intense. Sam. Sam's hand moved down my leg. Her fingers stroked against my thigh. She kissed my chest slowly. My fingers and lips were like ocean waves. It was gentle, yet strong. It surged and retreated. I felt like the moon was sinking beneath the sea. I was frightened. I didn't know what would happen if I sank into the watery depths. But I felt safe in her embrace. Her touch gave me comfort. I needed to know beyond this. I needed to know her true feelings towards me. Michelle, do you want me? Sam, I... I do. Good girl. I don't like that. I do not like that. <laughs> Sam, I... I need you. Oh, shit. Oh, okay, that's not so bad. Why do they have to emphasize that bit? Okay. I want you to feel my love. Okay, calm down. <laughs> We've known each other for about a week, if that. Sam teased the area between my legs. She used her fingers to draw circles rhythmically over my skin. I've never been touched like this before. I felt like I was going to burn up. It was embarrassing. My heart was pounding so loudly in my ears. I could feel the pulse of my blood... Pull, my, I could feel the pulse and my blood pooling between my legs. Yikes. The pressure was good. It was steady and warm. Sam kissed the area beneath my breast and continued planting kisses down my abdomen and onto my thigh. I felt her teeth gnaw on my leg. I don't know if I'd call it gnawing. Mm -hmm. She bit me again, now on my inner thigh. This time the pain was piercing. I let out a cry. S Sam. I'm not saying I'm not going to make oh noises. I'm sorry. Michelle. Sam, what are you? I want you to feel more than this. Sam lifted up my skirt 
and she slowly pulled down my underwear. It stuck to my skin. I felt my body sticky. I felt dirty. Dirty. <laughs> I felt bare. Sam, don't look too much. Michelle, you're so charming. I love your eyes and the way you look at me. I love your lips and how you kiss me. I want to cherish you. I want to cherish every part of you. Michelle, Sam, she reached inside me. Yikes, that's a weird way to say it. I called out her name again, this time with urgency. S Sam, <laughs> Sam, please. I felt like a drop of water that soon poured out like a flood and she put her tongue on my most sensitive place. It was warm and soft, delicate and deliberate. It was a feeling I've never felt before. Michelle, I heard her whisper to me. I love you. Jesus Christ, calm down. She said it quietly, but I heard her clearly. I wanted her love. I wanted all that she had to give. I wanted to answer her. My mind turned blank. I was going to be carried away by the waves. I was going to scream. S Sam, I'm not, I'm not doing the oh noises. Whatever will be, will be until the sun rises. So we're going to leave this off here because I'm not going any further than that for the time being. Hold on one second. Let's do this. All right. So we will leave it off there for right now. She wakes up in Sam's room. We will come back at a later time and continue on with the story then. Uh, so hopefully I didn't sound uh, too horribly uh, monotone through that, but I'm not going to sit there and make oh noises, oh noises just for the sake of this. Um, that being said, <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to chomp down on that like button. If you did like it, leave a comment down below with any other game suggestions or video ideas that you'd like to see from me. Share this channel with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already to see other videos that I've done. I will see you all in the next one.